Welcome to the Presbyterian Church in Morristown. Today's church is the third house of worship for the Presbyterian Congregation in Morristown, which dates to 1733 at this location. The first building was in use for approximately 55 years and the second for 100 more. This building is 125 years old and standing strong with our hope that it will continue to serve future generations. The building was designed by New York-based architect Josiah Cleveland Cady and completed in 1894. It was recently renovated, which gives us a good reason to look back at the long history of this church. In the early 1700s, people in the area that would soon become known as Morristown traveled by foot, horse, and cart to the village of Whippany to worship. As their community grew, they desired their own church. In 1733, they established the Morristown Presbyterian Church as a separate congregation and built a meeting house in 1739 to 40. The first ordained minister, Reverend Timothy Johns, a Yale graduate, arrived in 1742. The meeting house was a simple square structure, a form favored by 17th and 18th century Protestant groups in the American colonies. Its simplicity of construction and its all-purpose nature made it a meeting house not just for worship, but as a community gathering space. The open interior was an intentional repudiation of the traditional Catholic churches of Europe with their long naves and the great distance between the congregation and the worship leaders. A meeting house was intended to allow people to meet together, to clearly hear the word of God. After 35 years in service, the meeting house was expanded by cutting the building in half and extending it to the west side by 25 feet. A steeple had already been added and a bell hung in it. According to tradition, the bell was a gift from King George II when he granted a charter to the trustees of the Morristown Congregation in 1756. A copy of the charter can be seen in the church entrance. The bell has been in continuous use in all three church buildings and is now programmed to toll without manually pulling on a rope. When the Continental Army stayed in Morristown during the American Revolution, the old church was given over for use as a hospital. The congregation is said to have carried on with worship in an orchard near the home of Pastor Johns. While encamped in Morristown in the spring of 1777, General Washington, a member of the Church of England, asked Pastor Johns if he could join the congregation in its celebration of the Lord's Supper. The Reverend is said to have replied, most certainly, Ours is not the Presbyterian, but the Lord's table, and we hence give the Lord's invitation to all of his followers of whatever denomination. A stained glass window installed in 1968 and made by J. Whipple and Company of Exeter, England, commemorates the general receiving communion in the orchard. The Washington window is one of the stained glass windows in the present building representing events in the history of the church. One trio illustrates the career of Reverend John Witherspoon and the church's relationship with Princeton University, going back to colonial times. The college was founded for the express purpose of training ministers in evangelical Presbyterianism. Witherspoon, who was Princeton's sixth president, appealed for aid in 1769 when Princeton faced financial hardship. Church trustees, including the pastor, responded with a donation of 140 British pounds. Part of the windows depicts Witherspoon at Princeton teaching James Madison, the future fourth president of the United States. Another shows Witherspoon signing the Declaration of Independence, the only clergyman to do so. Witherspoon also convened the first General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church in Philadelphia in 1789, an event that made the American church independent of the church in Scotland. That same year, 1789, the trustees began discussion of building a new church, and two years later, some 200 men assisted in raising a wooden frame. After more than 50 years as pastor, Reverend Johns gave his last sermon in the meeting house. The new church was dedicated in 1795. It faced the Morristown Green, open land that was deeded to the town by the church in 1816. The church was a classic white wooden federal style building of a type common in many New England towns to this day. It had a tall steeple that stood as a proud beacon on the green for a century, although it had a humbling beginning. 
Soon after the church was completed, a local resident took aim for some target practice. Bullet holes are visible in this preserved weather vane. A session house, or building for holding meetings of the governing body of the church, was added next to the sanctuary in 1816. This simple structure was replaced by a fashionable looking chapel in the Italianate style in 1869, a chapel that is still used for smaller services. In many American churches in the 19th century, social and theological controversies brought unrest. There was dissension over the issue of allowing music in worship and of temperance and slavery. By 1840, disagreements on matters both large and small resulted in the Morristown Presbyterian Church dividing into two distinct and separate congregations, the First Presbyterian Church in Morristown and the Second Congregation later known as the South Street Presbyterian Church. A wooden structure was built on South Street for the congregation of the Second Church, but was later consumed by fire. A large brownstone building replaced it in 1877. That church was designed by devout Presbyterian and rising architect of the era, Josiah Cleveland Cady, known at that time for his design of the First Presbyterian Church of Oyster Bay, Long Island. Katy went on to a prolific and successful career, designing the original Metropolitan Opera House, the Museum of Natural History, and several buildings at Wesleyan, Williams, and Trinity Colleges, as well as at Yale University. Less than 20 years after the South Street congregation hired him to design their church, J.C. Katy would return to Morristown to design the sanctuary of the First Presbyterian Church as a very well-known and accomplished architect. After a hundred years, numerous repairs, and a changing local church landscape, the once stately 1795 clapboard Presbyterian church building on the green was dismantled. The cornerstone for the new Katy design building was laid in 1893, and it was dedicated the following year. Architect Katy worked closely with the church building committee to create a magnificent church inside and out. The interior is full of decorative symbols, including the empty cross, a lion representing the resurrected Christ, and a wreath of 12 circles recalling the 12 apostles. Katie also worked with the organ maker, Odell, to design the organ case. That original organ was replaced in 1960 by one manufactured by the Austin Organ Company, and it was upgraded again in the mid-1990s. It now has 3,370 pipes and a musical instrument digital interface that provides a vast number of new digitally produced sounds. The working organ pipes are in the organ behind the case. The cosmetic pipes were regilded in the 1980s by a team of experts from Germany as a bequest from Elizabeth Lytle, the great great granddaughter of Reverend Johns, the first pastor. The 182 original oak pews in the church are the work of James Clark, a local carpenter on the building committee, also in charge of erecting horse and buggy sheds on the property. A side note for history enthusiasts. At the time of the church's construction, James Clark owned the colonial era Jabez Campfield House at Five Oliphant Place in Morristown. Today, it is also known as the Schuyler Hamilton House under the care of the Morristown chapter of the DAR. The house is known as the location where Alexander Hamilton courted his future wife, Eliza, or Betsy, Schuyler. Building this new church took a lot of time and money. The total cost for this building, dedicated in 1894, was $138,280.18. The steel framing was the most modern building system available, but support for the large open interior space still relied on four immense columns of polished New Brunswick red granite from a quarry in Maine. Each weighed 6,500 pounds and had to be hauled into place by special tracks built from the railroad line. As in so many building projects, budget realities loomed. Although the church was designed with a clock tower, its construction was put on hold. Citizens outside the congregation offered to create a special subscription, a monetary pledge to secure a clock in the tower that could be illuminated at night. The church agreed to proceed if the money could be raised with the caveat that they could not guarantee the clock would always be lighted 
and the fund would need to include the cost for the height of the tower to be increased by five feet and for ornamental stonework to surround the four clock dials as shown in the architect's drawings. The community's contributions were sufficient to ensure that the tower was built as originally planned with clock faces visible throughout Morristown, flanked by decorative relief sculptures. The tower was the tallest structure in Morristown until the construction of Headquarters Plaza in the early 1980s. The church was designed with non-pictorial windows, but these were intended to be replaced over time with memorial windows depicting historical or scriptural events. It took about 75 years, but the work was done due to the generosity of members. The first memorial window to be installed depicting the Good Shepherd was given in memory of George Stone in 1896. Mr. Stone was a wealthy businessman, a member of Brick Presbyterian Church in New York, a visitor and contributor to the Morristown Church who summered here during the Gilded Age when many mansions were built in and around Morristown. The window was designed with glass manufactured by Lewis Comfort Tiffany and is marked copyright 1896 Tiffany Glass Decorating Company. Note the opalescent quality of the glass, a hallmark of Tiffany's finest work. The resurrection window, in memory of Mr. Stone's wife, Georgiana, was installed next. Its importance was noted in the New York Observer in 1910. Another Tiffany Favreau glass memorial window rich in color and design, depicting an angel, cave, and three Marys bringing spices to the empty tomb, has been placed in the nave of the First Presbyterian Church in Morristown, New Jersey. The lighted trefoil-shaped cross suspended in the narthex is also made with Tiffany glass. The oldest artifact is located on the windowed screen separating the nave and the narthex. It is a simple wooden cross made from a roof beam of Westminster Abbey, England, built in the 1300s. A piece of wood was given to Mr. Gordon Parsons, a member of this church, by a cousin who was in charge of the abbey when the beams were restored in the 1960s. In 1646, that beam overlooked the writing of the Westminster Confession of Faith that is the doctrinal standard of the Presbyterian Church. Following construction, this church thrived, as did the South Street Church. They operated independently, but as generations passed, earlier disputes faded, and the congregations held joint services and supported many of the same local, national, and foreign missions. In 1925, both churches voted in favor of reuniting. A window commemorates this event. Pastor James Howard stands in the foreground of the South Street Church, and Pastor William Bennett is in front of this building. In the middle, Jesus is depicted with the words of scripture that they may all be one. The reunion window, like the other historical windows, was made by J. Whipple and Company in England. The reunited church was called and remains the Presbyterian Church in Morristown. The final memorial window, dedicated to William Woodward Case, was installed in 1970. Its subject is the Nativity, and it was created by Payne Studios based in Patterson, New Jersey. George Payne represented Whipple of Exeter, England for many years in the United States, and even after they discontinued formal ties, Payne used many current and former Whipple designers. The Nativity window is made from a combination of types of glass. You can see the solid colored glass similar to that used in the church history windows, but also the window includes opalescent Tiffany glass that was located in Kokomo, Indiana. In 2018 to 19, the coffered ceiling was restored. 576 rosettes were individually inspected and repaired. The front chancel area was expanded and modified to better accommodate choirs and other programs. Lighting and a sound system improved vision and acoustics within the sanctuary space. The renovation retained the integrity of the original design and enhanced the objective of architect Katie to build a progressive Protestant worship space with a central raised pulpit as the focal point. According to Katie, a forward-thinking modern church was to be a place for clearly seeing and hearing the word of God with no blind spots or compromised acoustics. This renovation 
funded by the congregation, carries on this tradition by honoring the past and welcoming the future.